All right, hi everybody. So I'm here with uh, Tristan. He's driving. Hey, Tristan. Hey. And uh, Ken. Hello. And uh, so we're gonna go explore Cagayan de Oro today. And uh, Tristan is nice enough to take us around. He's got a car, so let's go check out Cagayan de Oro. So welcome to my review of Cagayan de Oro. I spent about a month in Cagayan de Oro, so based on my time here, obviously I couldn't see every attraction. I couldn't stay at every condo. I couldn't check out every aspect of Cagayan de Oro, but from what I saw, uh, Cagayan de Oro um, really grew on me. I, I really enjoyed it, and there is a lot of things to see, a lot of things to do a lot of nature and that's really important to me so if you've seen any of my other videos on reviews of cities I break it into five categories safety cost of living things to do infrastructure and friendliness okay so while we're going I'm gonna play some background video of places that I got to visit and I'll go ahead and scroll the names of those locations uh, during the video so if you have any questions on those, you can comment. Uh, so first, safety. Um, yeah, I would say Cagayan de Oro is very safe. Um, safer than many cities in the Philippines. And um, certainly there are some areas that you shouldn't go into, just like any city anywhere around the world. Uh, there's places maybe at nighttime that you shouldn't go into. Uh, there are places that um, are best to have a Filipino friend with you. But for the most part, um, I found it to be very safe, so I give it a pretty high rating on safety. Now, there are locations just outside of Cagayan de Oro, not that far away, uh, that you should stay out of. And I will flash up a map here on the screen. Um, somebody also asked me about pollution and how how is the air you know and uh, the air was great um, I'll throw up an index on the screen here to show you too so number two we have cost of living now I stayed at a condo here in Cagayan de Oro the entire time uh, and I was paying about 500 a month and that included electric internet cable TV water so it included everything um, it was a nice one bedroom condo and it was very convenient located near a lot of different uh, malls and uh, a market and so um, I really loved the location it was called Uptown now Cagayan de Oro has uh, high-end condos and they've got and they also have uh, secured and gated uh, housing areas that you can live in and I have a friend that uh, you can see on the video here Ken he actually lives in one of those locations and he feels more than comfortable so cost of living um, really it just depends I I find cost of living to be a really hard topic to to rate on a city because really all over the Philippines you can live really inexpensively or you can live um, extravagantly unless you're deep in the province then you really have no choice but to live moderately because you're not gonna live in a condo um, so cost of living um, I found it to be pretty inexpensive here in Cagayan de Oro um, I would rate it a little bit less than D Davao and a little bit less than uh, Cebu if I was gonna compare okay so number three things to do um, I was blown away by all the things to do in Cagayan de Oro. Um, like I said, there's a lot of malls and you got movie theaters, you got the uptown area, downtown area, you got the markets, uh, night markets that you can go to to go get food. And um, there is a lot of nature. You got white water rafting, you've got uh, zip line, you've got paragliding, uh, or yeah, paraglide gliding 
and you have um, ATVs and four wheeling. You have, uh, I believe it's called Seven Seas um, Water Park. And uh, there's a nearby island, and I'll, I'll throw the name out. But it's supposed to be a really nice island. You can go there. Um, and, and here in the video, you can see the parasailing they were doing at the top of the mountain here. Um, they have an infinity pool at the top of the mountain here that you can go swimming in and, and over. You can have a, a view of the city at nighttime while you're swimming in the infinity pool. It costs like a hundred pesos, which is two bucks to take a little uh, uh, shuttle up to the top. And then the entrance fee is like 60 pesos or something like another dollar. Really inexpensive. And then there's restaurants with live music up there. It's just a lot of fun. There's a lot, a lot of things to do in Cagayan de Oro. Um, I didn't have a chance to do everything I wanted to, um, but so far, Cagayan de Oro might be my favorite place as far as things to do. Now, a lot of you guys might disagree. Um, I'm really into nature and I really liked it. So, you know, feel free to comment and tell me what places you like. I'm, I'm still exploring, still so many cities to explore. Um, but here there was also at the top uh, was a place where you know with the transformers and they have the uh, I forget what, what it's called but it's like a, a challenge course you know where you can climb the wall um, you can uh, do zip lines up here you know just a lot of a lot of fun activities that you can do and it's good for kids too they have an area for kids too so yeah, it was it was just a lot of fun up here. So things to do, I rate it really high as well. So number four is infrastructure. Now I had somebody comment down below and say, how can you compare this infra infrastructure and uh, say it's good compared to you know the U.S. And when I'm talking about infrastructure here in the Philippines, I'm not comparing it. Um, against Western infrastructure that's just not fair it's um, Philippines just has not developed far enough yet uh, to get to that point when I talk about infrastructure I'm comparing it against other places that you can live at in the uh, in the Philippines so uh, infrastructure was great I thought the roads were really good the roads were were wide and uh, um, traffic didn't seem too bad during the during the rush hour in the downtown area, there was a little bit of traffic, uh, but but you got taxis uh, galore that you can use. Uh, there's malls all over the place. There's great restaurants right on the ocean, great condos for living, housing developments if you want to live in a house uh, that are gated and secured. Um, internet was good. Um, electric is good. In fact, I was told that here in Cagayan de Oro, uh, much less subject to brownouts due to the power company that they have running here in Cagayan de Oro. Um, they say that it's w one of the best in the uh, Philippines. So brownouts, um, like I said, I've been here a month, no brownouts at all, which is phenomenal. Um, and my internet's good, roads were good. So yeah, uh, another one that I rated pretty high. Comparing it against other places in the Philippines, infrastructure was really good. So, yeah, I'm, I was quite happy with it. Okay, the last one, number five, is friendliness of the people. Now, again, I can't say this enough. When you're in the Philippines, they're going to be friendly all over. Um, there are areas that are going to be more friendly, um, for sure. Like, I find Manila a bit cold. Um, not like... Western countries, um, but it's much colder than the the rest of the country. And when I say cold, I mean lack of friendliness. Um, Cebu, I Cebu, Dumaguete. I found areas with a lot of expats to be less friendly than others. Um, but again, they're still very very friendly. It's just not as friendly as other places. But General Santos uh, was no different really than any other place that I've traveled to. Davao, General Santos, very friendly people. Um, then we went to this uh, zoo here. I'll show you real quick. 
All right, so we are on our way over to, what is it called? Uh, Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark in Kagai and Dora. We're going to go check out that place for some more video. See you guys in a bit. <laughs> and that's a good example of friendliness. Um, I met Ken. Uh, he's an expat. He views my channel. We've known each other for a few years, actually. And uh, he introduced me to Tristan, a Filipino guy here living in uh, Cagayan de Oro. And we had one introduction and Tristan volunteered to, to drive us around and show us around Cagayan de Oro. I mean, you know, where can you find that type of friendliness? Um, didn't want anything for it. I mean, just very friendly people here. So, yeah, and then we, we checked out this uh, zoo and everything. Um, if if you're worried about animal cruelty and uh, small cages and um, the mistreatment of animals, uh, don't go to a zoo in the Philippines because the cages are quite small. Um, the animals just aren't well well kept compared to uh, Western countries. Um, but back on track, friendliness people, fantastic. Really, really good. So yeah, Cagayan de Oro, so far out of the places I visited, it's uh, it's rating at the highest. And, uh, and for me, it edges out Davao. And so my overall score on a one to five for Cagayan de Oro I'm going to go ahead and give it a 4.6. Um, I'll be moving on here within about 10 days or so. And I will be checking out Iligan as well. And um, yeah, but uh, I give it overall a 4.6 for Kagawa. Okay, so I appreciate you guys watching this video and checking out my review of Kagayan de Oro. Um, it's a phenomenal city, still much to explore, and as I tour around, all, all these cities are um, getting put on the list, or certain cities are getting put on the list to come back and visit because I just don't have enough time to visit and uh, see all the attractions that I wanted to. Um, so I had a lot of video footage of Cagayan de Oro that I want to show you, so I'll, I'll kind of continue the video but I'll just kind of chat here but um, so this place was called Noah's Ark it sits up at the top of the mountain um, and you'll have to take a a little uh, jeepney or a little shuttle bus that will take you over to it now uh, this place in particular really you can skip unless you have kids the kids will like it um, but for adults, no, it's not really for adults. Um, we did we did hop over here and check it out. The view is phenomenal, um, so it's pretty awesome. But you can see that uh, the small little cages for the animals. It's quite common in the Philippines. Um, it's already kind of a cruel thing to put animals in cages at zoos, in my opinion, anyway. And then. You put them in even smaller cages where they can't even move around or get exercise, and it's um, kind of kind of frustrating and annoying. But uh, yeah, so if you don't have kids, then this place I would say give it a pass. Um, nearby, and you take you take a, it's a free shuttle from one place to the next. Nearby is the place called uh, Amaya. And that's the place that's got the infinity pool that overlooks the city. And it also has the uh, uh, adventure course with the uh, uh, climbing wall and the zip line. And it's got all the transformers. And uh, that it's got ATVs and four wheel. So that place is a lot of fun. Um, here, you, you can see she's our, our tour guide. She took us around and showed us all the animals. Um, there's not a lot to it. I'm pretty sure I gave her a nosebleed by making her speak English. <laughs> so, because she defaulted to English. Um, but it is cool, they have a lot of cool statues. And what's cool is you can see these statues and you can see the ark from the other uh, tourist attraction up on top of the mountain. And uh, so it does, it does have a, a great vantage point to overlook the city and there you can see it Noah's Ark 
Um, and there's animals on the inside too. So um, it's a really novel idea. It's kind of cool. Uh, again, but it's for it's more for the kids. So uh, we checked out this place, uh, and after. After we checked out this place, we headed out to lunch. I'll show you that here in a second. Now, Cagayan de Oro is gonna have phenomenal seafood. And so we wanted to go check out our local seafood place. And there was one, um, actually there's several that are right on the ocean. Uh, and so we checked out that one here. And uh, I'll show you that here in a second. But uh, yeah, quick quick trip up here um, there's a lot to do you could probably spend half a day I would come back at night and do that infinity pool or do it just as the Sun is setting I think that would be phenomenal in fact I will probably do that before I leave and I'll probably do some video of that I might make a separate video just on, on that alone and eat at the restaurant too um, so yeah uh, but we headed out to eat after this Okay, so we made a pit stop at this restaurant here on the ocean. You can see our table is right there on the ocean there. Uh, and so I just ordered some grilled tuna belly, some vegetables, and uh, Ken, what did you order? You ordered? Um, garlic shrimp. Garlic shrimp, okay. Yeah, basically it's everything for sharing, then you basically added some soup there. Um, well, I'm going to have rice, they're not going to have rice, so, yeah. <laughs> no, the one food. The one Filipino is going to have rice, and we're, yeah. we're not going to have rice. Yeah. Um, so we'll show you what we ordered and, uh, as soon as it comes out. So for the three of us, we ordered you know a bunch of food with an appetizer and drinks. Came out to like 30 US dollars or 1,600 pesos. So it's a phenomenal deal, and it's a great view. So check out this place. I'll scroll the name across. OK, so we're eating uh, lunch now. We got our food. We got uh, some vegetables here. What is this soup called? Uh, imbao. Imbao. Grilled tuna belly, uh, buttered shrimp, and calamari. And so we're going to go ahead and dig in, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya. So for the last part of the day, we went to Lane 101, which is an uptown. They sell fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, bunch of uh, restaurants and they have uh, kind of an outdoor uh, barbecue places selling lechon they've got places with uh, ice cream um, you can see here all, all the great fruit and vegetables very safe location um, it's right across from SM City and Uptown it's also where I'm staying at which is uh, Primavera Residences condo and uh, I really like this location. I, I like it a lot. It feels extremely modern for me. Feels um, feels like you're kind of living in the West till you step outside, and uh, and you see all the Filipino faces, and then you realize you're not. But uh, I enjoyed the area a lot. I do want to check out the downtown area. There's a lot of condos over there too. Um, but here, yeah, you can see mangoes, lanzonas, watermelon. Bananas, papaya, mangoes. Um, they got the camotes, um, durian, pomelo. Um, so just a huge variety of fruits and vegetables, pineapple uh, to choose from. And very friendly. You can see them always happy. Always happy and waving at you. Of course, selling rice. Now they have a cool little bakery up ahead that I checked out. Um, I never did buy any, but they have something called buco pie, which is coconut pie. They sell it as a large pie, or you can buy the small little individual uh, buco pies, coconut pies, and they are really tasty. I really enjoy them. So if you like coconut and you like pies, check out these buco pies here. You can see them. Um, on the left side top, I believe. Okay, so Tristan told us about an ice cream place. He said, you have to check it out. Um, they have a, a cool dessert here. 
Um, normally they have something called hollow hollow, which translated I believe means mix mix. It's just a variety of things all mixed together over shaved ice. Now this is called uh, oh, uh, I cannot remember the name now, but um, I'll, I'll mention it here in a minute, but uh, I found it really good. It had fresh watermelon, mangoes, um, strawberries, ice cream, shaved ice, and, uh, and some jellies and stuff here. And um, it was quite delicious, you'll see in a second here, but um, that was the first time that I've had it. Knickerbocker, that's what it's called, Knickerbocker. I, I want it, I love it. I want it, I love it, big. Yeah, Knickerbocker, you can see it there on the sign. If they only knew the joke there, I want it, I love it, big. Okay, but uh, yeah, um, and then they got great picnic benches out here and you can sit down and, and enjoy the, uh, you know, the fresh breeze and everything. It, it was really a, a nice night. Um, but nice setup, really nice setup in Uptown. So if you get to Cagayan de Oro, stay in the Uptown area. It's, it's quite nice, for sure. Okay, so we just ordered some local ice cream here. It's called Knickerbocker, and it's got uh, ice cream and jelly and what else? Uh, mangoes, some watermelon, and then the ice would be with condensed milk, so it's kind of sweet. Um, on top yeah. of strawberry ice cream with syrup. Yeah, uh, so we're going to check this out here, and uh, I'll let you know how it tastes. Please subscribe to your community!